Hello, beautiful. In today's video, I want to talk about anxiety and talk about some of the things that have helped me over the years to not only, you know, help keep me from even having it, but help me when I'm actually going through it. I want to talk about some things that I've done that have worked and talk about some things that I avoid that just seem to exacerbate the frequency or the um, duration or the intensity of the anxiety that I'm experiencing. So in today's video, I'm really gonna be focusing on like medical anxiety and the anxiety that we feel when we need to go to a doctor because we're not feeling good or even the anxiety that we are feeling because we know we're gonna have to go through an explant surgery. I've been there. I literally felt like the weeks leading up to my explant surgery, my anxiety was just getting worse and worse every day. Um, I was crying just out of nowhere. I was just feeling really overwhelmed and just overall really scared and really worried. You know, I felt so weak and so sick leading up to my explant that I was like, what if my body just gives out and I don't make it through the surgery, which I think a lot of women think about and go through. A little bit of my worry was like, how am I gonna look? Although I was, I just didn't feel so good that I literally didn't, didn't care about how I was gonna look. But as a woman, we can't help but feel that way and wonder like, what are we gonna look like, right? So there's just a lot of anxiety that leads up to explanting, a lot of anxiety in regards to seeing another doctor or seeing a specialist. You know, what if I have a rare cancer? What if they find something? What if I'm gonna have to be on medication for the rest of my life? What if I'm going to have to um, have another surgery or another technique done to me um, because of something that I'm dealing with, right? So it is a lot and we're going to get into a lot. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of things with you. I've really given this a lot, <laughs> I keep saying that, a lot of time. And I do wanna let you know that I'm gonna be talking about a lot here today and I'm gonna be throwing a lot at you, but in the description area down below is where I'm gonna be spending a lot of time sharing links with you, sharing um, like exact things and exact websites and exact brands. Um, that I've used, that I trust, that I've seen really good results with, that I want to pass on to you. Because it's one thing for me to say, you know, do this and do this and this really helped and this really helped, but then there's also those questions of like, okay, well, like who's the best person to help with breath work? Or, you know, what are the best essential oils? Or what's the best magnesium? Or what are the best adaptogens? You know, so you're gonna have questions like, okay, well, what's the best? Like, what did you use? And I'm gonna be sharing all that down below um, in the description area. So after you're done watching this video, definitely go down there, read through there, and then just click on all the links and whatever you're interested in, definitely just check out. With that being said, I am not a doctor. I'm not in the medical field. So everything that I'm gonna talk about is just from a patient's perspective, from things that I have gone through myself, from thoughts that I've thought of myself, so I'm gonna just share, you know, a little bit of stories with you to share kind of what I've gone through and what I've experienced with this topic, with anxiety, with anxiety of doctors and all of that. And share with you, of course, the things that have really helped me that I hope will help you. And if you're new to me and my channel, hello, I'm Christina, the founder of Size Happy and the admin of the best Facebook group, on Facebook. Breast Implant Illness Rejuvenation and Education with Christina and you can also find me on Instagram at I am size happy. As most of you know, I myself have gone through breast implant illness and an explant surgery. So when I was going through my own health issues from the end of 2014 until the end of 2018, I didn't know that I had breast implant illness. So like a lot of women would go into the doctors, we have fatigue or joint pain, we're emotional, we have anxiety, we have infections, we have rashes, we have digestive issues, like all of these things going on. And most of the time from what I have kind of found out from a common theme in my group is doctors just wanna throw antibiotics and like anxiety medicine 
down our throats. It's like, here, try this and see what happens. I don't see anything wrong with you. Your labs look normal, you know, or they send you to a specialist. And some women have got, actually a lot of women have gotten autoimmune issues, um, lupus, MS, um, Epstein-Barr virus, which is what I have. So right now and for the rest of my life, you know, I just have to be really careful with stress and overexerting myself because those are two things that can really trigger an Epstein-Barr virus flare, which will cause fatigue and anxiousness and insomnia and everything like that. For me on a day-to-day -day basis, especially after explanting, I find that I am a lot calmer than, especially when I was going through those four years in and out of doctors. Don't have anxiety. The only time that I ever really get anxious or what I would call anything close to feeling like I have anxiety is when there's something wrong with my health. And you know, I think this is just a lot of trauma from not trusting the medical field, not feeling heard a lot of the times. And you know, just feeling like I'm getting nowhere. I'm trying to figure this out basically on my own because no other doctor seemingly cared um, and was trying to really help me from my perspectives. You know, anytime I have something wrong with me, I am either like, I really got to go to the doctor and figure out what's wrong with me. Or if I'm like really scared, I will kind of push back because I don't want to have to go through like another surgery for anything or the possibility of being put on um, a prescription medicine for the rest of my life. So I would say, it, you know, anytime that I have anxiety, it usually comes from a health standpoint and from a doctor standpoint um, besides flying. I am so scared of airplanes and being up in an airplane because I feel like I'm out of control. That's a whole nother story, but those are literally the only two things that really like get me anxious and give me anxiety. I actually shared a little bit about this inside of my Facebook group and another Facebook group that I'm a moderator for and just shared my thoughts and how real medical anxiety really is. And the response that I got was just like, everybody else that responded at least felt the same way. They just felt like they couldn't trust doctors. They were getting the runaround and they were really scared of going to the doctor, which if you're actually having a serious medical issue, being scared to go to a doctor could actually be really bad. You know, I could go off on a tangent on all of that, but I really wanna get into some things that have helped me on a day-to-day -day basis with keeping my anxiety and my thoughts, which is essentially what it is, because I can let my thoughts carry me away. Like, oh my gosh, what is this? Why am I so fatigued? Am I getting sick? Um, is this something like anytime I have a symptom of some sort, I always just go there. My mind just goes there and I just think the worst thing um, is happening to my body. So I have to be very mindful of my thoughts, but I'm gonna share some things that I do for the most part, every day that has helped me, I would definitely pause right now and just get a piece of paper and take some notes. Some of these things you might be doing, especially if you have been dealing with anxiety for a long time, you've, like me, like you've probably tried everything. So this might be just like a refresher and a reminder to, yes, I really gotta take care of myself, like my emotional self and my mental self, you know? Like, now is the time to do it. Let me get back to doing these things that I'm gonna talk about here. All right, so I'm just gonna look down here at my notes. I don't wanna chop this video up too much and just kind of keep it seamlessly. So the first thing is keeping a gratitude journal. When you're just in a place of gratitude, you're focusing on all the things that you're grateful for, all the things that you have, not not in the future and all the things that could be that probably won't be. So keeping a gratitude to journal, writing like three to five things down every single morning. It could be the same three to five things. It could be different, um, but just doing that every morning as soon as you wake up. Then meditating or just sitting there and praising, praying, keeping your mind clear, whatever kind of feels right for you, but meditating, just being really still um, for like this 10 minutes first thing in the morning. Third thing is affirmations and minding your thoughts. For me personally, my thoughts can get away from me. I, oh my gosh, I can just 
go way out in left field with what is going on with my body. And so I really have to mind my thoughts and, and, you know, be very intentional on that. So, you know, just affirming like, I am safe, I will get through this. Something that's really been helping me a lot lately because I've been having fatigue and I've been having some pain in my ribs here um, and just some other things going on is, is telling myself, I've been here before and I felt this way before and I'm still here and I've made it and I've gotten through it and I'll get through it again. I just, you know, this is just like another little phase of, you know, whatever I'm going through. So that kind of like thought process has really helped me um, with just reminding myself of, yeah, I've been here before and I've made it and I'm going to make it again. So whatever kind of affirmations work for you, what feels right for you, definitely just keep affirming your way towards how you want to feel and how, you know, the things that you want to think uh, mentally. This is a big one, getting outside. So of course you get outside, you're in the fresh air, you have the warmth on your skin, the sunlight, you're grounding in the earth, um, you're moving your body. You know, I know oftentimes when you're tired and you're just consumed with worry and anxiety, it's really hard to get off the couch. I know that's how it is for me, but I know when I literally pull myself off the couch and I just tell myself, I'm just gonna go walk like to the end of my road, and back, it's 15 minutes, I feel better, a little bit. I feel like, okay, I did something for myself. Like, you know, wasn't it wasn't much, right? But I got off the couch and I did something for myself and that feels good. So getting outside, doing something, going for a walk, whatever it may be, playing some frisbee with your dog and um, something like that, which kind of goes into the next thing with exercising or moving your body. So exercise, it just increases the endorphins. It makes you feel really good. Um, so I'm a big exerciser. I love exercising. I can tell when I don't exercise for like two weeks, my energy drops. I just don't feel as peppy um, and energetic. It actually makes me more tired when I don't exercise. So exercising, lifting some light weights, that just really has helped um, improve my overall mood and well-being. Minimizing caffeine. So I do have an energy drink in the morning and then I love iced tea. So um, I have a nice big iced tea like mid afternoon, like three, four o'clock. And that's all I drink. If I drink any more, if I drink any later, I'm gonna just stay up all night. But minimizing the caffeine, because of course, the more caffeine that you drink, just the more jittery you feel, the more anxious you feel, the more rattled you feel, and that can elevate and intensify anxiety just monitor your caffeine intake. If you find like you're really anxious, be like, oh, do I have a lot of caffeine that day? And just kind of see if there's a link between the amount of caffeine that you're consuming and the frequency, duration, or intensity of the anxiety that you're feeling. This is a big one. Minimizing the news or social media or you know any kind of triggers online. So what I mean by that is like Google, I was a big Googler back in 2015, 2016, when I was really trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And everything always told me that I was dying or that I had a cancer. And that of course did not help my anxiety. So it's really finding out what your triggers are and what things kind of contribute to you feeling stressed and scared and like in fear, which the news can do that. Um, social media these days can do that because things are so polarizing these days. Everybody has their own opinion about everything and it could just really harbor stress and like frustration and anger and all of that. And of course, like since we're talking about breast implant illness and preparing for an explant and stuff like that, of course, if there's any Facebook groups that just bring you stress where you don't feel safe in or it's just becoming too much, I would definitely recommend just pulling back from those Facebook groups. When I was preparing for my explant surgery, like the week before, 10 days before my explant, I had to step back from Facebook groups because it was actually making me feel like something was gonna go wrong with my surgery. I just kept seeing a lot of posts from women, like, you know, I just had my explant and I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with this and, you know, my drains and infection and spitting stitches. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, is that gonna happen to me? Like, what if that happens to me? What am I, you know? And 
uh, I can just overthink everything. So it's just being very mindful of the things that you're consuming on TV, social media, what you're Googling, and the groups that you're hanging out with on Facebook. Something else that definitely helps me is minimizing the amount of time that I spend around toxic negative people, um, negative places, and also like bad habits that are not contributing to my overall peace and well-being and happiness. So it's identifying those things as well. You know, what people in my life are just causing me to stress out and freaking me out? You know, what places, like a job or whatever, your parents' house or whatever it may be, but you know, what places just aren't good for me right now? And then, um, you know, what habits am I doing? Am I having too much caffeine? Am I getting to bed too late? Like, am I not taking care of myself? So it's really identifying the things that aren't working for you anymore and your overall peace. Getting your gut in check. So I don't know if you know this, but your gut is also considered your second brain. There's some research coming out that is finding that anxiety isn't just like a mental thing coming from your brain. It could also be connected to your gut. Getting your gut in order with probiotics, digestive enzymes, you know, removing the artificial sweeteners and stuff like that, that can contribute to just getting your gut microbiome and bacteria off balance. Those things you want to avoid, but you want to get definitely get your gut in check before your explant surgery, especially because you just want to be as healthy and as strong as you can leading up to your explant surgery, which is something that I do help a lot of women with through the BII Bridge program that I'll briefly talk about in this video. Adaptogens. So adaptogens are herbs that work with your body and help your body respond to stress in a more balanced way. So if any of you are just feeling overwhelmed and stressed, um, if your cortisol is really high, if your adrenaline is really high, then adaptogen herbs might be beneficial for you. I'm going to link some down below in the comments, the ones that I like, the ones that I've used, and the brands that I trust. I'm going to do this with a lot of stuff in this video that I'm talking about. So um, definitely, like I said in the beginning of the video, go check out the description area below because it's just going to have a ton of really good information down there as well. CBD. I have used CBD uh, like lotions on areas where I've had pain and I've also used CBD when I just needed to chill or I needed to uh, calm down and, and get a better night's sleep. So CBD would also be a really good option as opposed to like sleeping pills or anything like that. Um, if you're experiencing any kind of like anxiousness to the point to where it's causing you anxiety, where you're having a hard time sleeping, falling asleep, staying asleep, all of that, definitely check out and look into CBD gummies or the liquids. Um, I think they're called tinctures. And I don't really think the lotions would help too much unless you're in pain, but definitely the CBD for just an overall calming effect on your body. Something that definitely helps me kind of combat anxiety and keep it at bay is just getting good sleep. Getting to bed at a good time. Um, if you need help with sleeping, like I mentioned earlier, CBD, but also magnesium or diffusing essential oils, just having those fragrances um, calming you down before bed, having a good nighttime routine. So turning off the TV like an hour before bed, having as dark of a room as you can stand, um, having it as cold as you can stand, typically like 67 degrees is, is the temperature that helps to produce the most melatonin, then you'll get a good night's sleep. So a dark, cold place, no blue light expo exposure before bed, um, those have really helped me with um, getting a good night's sleep, especially when I'm feeling a little bit more anxious for whatever reason. There's three more things that I want to talk about. EMDR therapy has helped me so much. This, you would have to find a therapist in your area, but EMDR, it, I, I have a hard time explaining this, but it has to do with bilateral stimulation. And what it does is it basically helps you to rewrite and reprocess a story um, in your mind from an experience that you've had. So I'm actually in therapy because of everything that I've gone through over the last four years of not feeling validated, not feeling heard, having doctor or one doctor really throw anxiety, Xanax at me, throw antibiotics at me, 
just feeling scared um, and all of that and how I processed it and how it has shown up in my, you know, my current life and how it keeps me from getting the, the annual checkups that I need to get because I'm just petrified of going to a doctor or having to be put on a medicine or anything like that. Funny story, side note. Um, it was like two or three weeks ago, I had a horrible congestion and I, it was either a, just a weak cold or some allergies. I had a mucinex and you're supposed to take two at once, but I always take half because I'm just so sensitive to everything. And it took me like 10 minutes to take, to take one mucinex because I'm like, oh, what if something happens to me? Like, what if my body reacts negatively or what if it causes this or da, 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 da. And I took the mucinex and I'm like, okay, we'll just see what happens. And I told my son, I was like, honey, I took a mucinex just so you know, you know, just in case, you know, something happens. Um, but that's just how I am. I just, I get so anxious with taking medicine. I hate taking medicine. I avoid taking medicine unless like I absolutely need it. Like I have a horrible headache or just a horrible pain that's keeping me from doing anything. That's the only time I'll ever take medicine. But just a funny story, like uh, medicine and doctors, not my not my thing. So with that being said, with the EMDR therapy, there's a YouTube channel. It's called Therapy in a Nutshell. And it's it's a woman, she's a therapist, and she talks a lot about anxiety, um, health anxiety, um, EMDR. She talks all about that. And it's basically like a free resource to help you better understand your mind and your thoughts and why your brain is working the way that it's working and stuff like that. So I'm gonna link that down below, but definitely like just check out her channel Go through all her videos, see which ones kind of resonate with you and what you feel like you need help with. But when I was going through anxiety, um, her videos helped me so much just with understanding why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling and why I'm thinking the things that I'm thinking and how to kind of laugh at that in a way and overcome it. And then kind of along that line as well is to communicate. So communicate with your spouse or communicate with your doctor or communicate with like me and my group, but it's just like communicating and getting things off your chest, so to say, really helps with feeling anxious and anxiety because obviously we know the more we bottle things up, the more we feel like we're gonna burst and the more frustrated we get, um, it's just not healthy. So just communicating when you're scared, communicating when you're overwhelmed, being very honest. Um, I feel like I can be completely honest with you and, and in my group and everything because I know that a lot of women are feeling and thinking the exact same things as I am. And I want women to just know that you're not alone. You're not alone in this process. You're not alone um, with how you're thinking. It's, you know, after all that we've been through, after all that we've learned, um, and after all that we're going to have to go through, it's good to know that there are a group of women who get you, who listen, who care, who can just say, you know, I don't really have anything to say, but I just want to say I'm praying for you or I'm here for you. Or if you need something, reach out. I mean, that is so, so important when you're feeling um, just really anxious and you're having a lot of anxiety. So EMDR therapy, the YouTube channel therapy in a nutshell, and then communication were all kind of like one thing that I wanted to talk about that really helped me to keep anxiety at bay. Two more things, mindfulness and just staying present. There's this saying that like anxiety stems from the future and just worrying about the future, what's going to happen in the future, what could be, you know, this and that. And depression stems from things that have happened in the past that, you know, you can't change or you can't get over. Um, and it could just really shrink you down and make you unhappy and, you know, that whole process. But, you know, just being very mindful of today and being present in this moment, because this moment is really all we have, is something that really helps me as well. This is actually probably the hardest thing for me to do out of everything that I've mentioned, even probably harder than the meditation. But just staying present and staying here and not letting your thoughts wander into the what ifs um, is something that has really helped me um, when I can master it. And then to tie it all together, it's just all about self-care, setting boundaries, realizing when you're, you know, you have too much on your plate 
and you're too stressed and taking a step back from things and responsibilities and whatever else need be and just focusing on yourself, whether that's sitting on the couch reading a book, sitting on the couch watching Netflix, taking a bath, playing with your dog, whatever self-care looks like for you, um, just really trying to fit in something every day that involves some kind of self-care. This is the really important part of the video where I'm gonna talk about things that I've actually done in the moment when I'm feeling overly anxious and experiencing something very similar to anxiety. So if you're feeling really anxious and you're experiencing anxiety, the first thing I would have you do is just take some deep breaths. Sit down, put your hands on your legs, and just take some slow, deep breaths. Feel it going in and out of your mouth. Notice how your lungs expand and then shrink and just kind of getting back into this moment. Saying, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little anxious right now. I've gone through this before. I know this feeling, I've, I've gone through it. I've made it, I'm going through it right now and I know that I'll get through this. So let me just breathe for a second. Close your eyes if you have to, but just breathe. And then after that is repeating some kind of affirmation. So like, I'm gonna get through this, I am safe, like I can handle this. I know things are tough right now, but like I'm even tougher. I will get through this, like there's no worries, like I'm here, like, you know, whatever you have to say to really talk to yourself. And then something else that this might be new to you, but it's called emotional freedom technique. And it involves tapping on specific meridian points on your body. I actually became a practitioner um, for EFT. So I'm an EFT practitioner now. EFT is amazing. It is amazing for anxiety specifically. You just tap on these points and you say certain phrases. I actually have a video on here. I'll link it below but it's about experiencing anxiety before your explant surgery. And you know, it goes through like, I know I'm scared, I will get through this, like, you know, and it goes through all your fears. Like, what if I die on the table? Like, what if something happens to me? And you just tap on all of these points and it just helps you process and release those worries and those fears. It's, it's amazing. So if you're feeling like you're experiencing anxiety, and it's definitely due to explant surgery related, um, or if it's if it's explant surgery related, I should say, then go check out that video that I created. I've actually had a couple people tell me that they've gone through that video multiple times leading up to their explant surgery, and it takes them from like an eight all the way down to a two. So it really does help to release um, any kind of worry that you're feeling. Again, gratitude. So just thinking about all the things that I'm grateful for, you know, like, oh, even though I'm experiencing this, I'm so grateful for, you know, whatever. I'm so grateful that I, you know, I have access to medical care if I really need it. I'm so grateful for my husband for just being here and supporting me. I'm so grateful that I have lungs right now that I'm just able to breathe even though like I'm dealing with this or I'm dealing with that. So just getting back into that gratitude when you're not feeling good emotionally or physically. Something else is, like looking to see, okay, what's one thing that I can touch? What's one thing that I can smell? What's one thing that I see? What's something I can hear? And just using your senses to kind of get back and get present in your body when your mind is just going elsewhere. And then two other things is CBD, which I talked about earlier. You know, when you're in the moment of feeling anxious and you're having anxiety, Taking some CBD can really help to chill you out and take the edge off of things. And then the last thing is a weighted blanket. If you're at home and you're experiencing this, then lay on the couch or go in your bed and just put that weighted blanket on you. And it gives you that feeling of just being cuddled and supported in a time when you really, really need it, right? So I'm gonna list all of these things down below. I know it's been a long video, but I'm gonna list all of these things down below share as many articles, research papers, like everything that I can share with you. But these are definitely just my go-tos when I am feeling anxious because I got something going on and some things that I do on a daily basis to help 
you know, keep my mind in check and keep me from going down the spiral to, you know, getting anxiety. A couple of things. So here's my uh, EFT practitioner certification that I have to frame. But a lot of this that I mentioned, I actually talk about in my program. It's called the BII Bridge. And there's two phases. There's the fighter phase, which is pre-explant. There is the warrior phase, which is post-explant. Pre-explant, we focus on preparing for your surgery, mentally and physically. And then uh, the warrior phase is the post-explant phase. And that's when we focus on recovery and detox. Both phases talk about the mind and the body, emotions, um, and then we talk about gut health, nutrition, immune system in both phases because it's just as important before your surgery um, as after your surgery to make sure that your immune system is really strong, your gut is really strong. Um, I encourage exercising both before and after surgery, um, but I go through all of that. It comes with a good combination of videos and guides. So there's the nutrition guide. Um, there's the immune system and gut health. Talk about sleep and essential oils and exercising. This is the this is the fighter phase. And then here's the warrior phase detox. So what to expect from that. And then some explant surgery essentials and medications to avoid. But I'm there with you the entire time. Like I've said, I've gone through breast implant illness. I've gone through an explant surgery and in the program, it just leads you right up to your explant. You just feel calm, you feel confident, you know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, when to stop doing things. And then the same with after your explant. Um, you know when to start doing things, when to like avoid doing things. Um, we go through the detox. Both include meditations, visualizations, EFT sessions, talk a lot about self-love and emotions and body image it encompasses all of that so a lot of what i talked about is actually in the bii bridge program i'll link that down below as well um and i know that was a lot so i don't want to keep you waiting any longer go ahead and go down below and look through the description area i'm going to share with you like everything that i've talked about in this video and if you watch this whole time thank you so much um, it really does mean a lot to me and if you're not, please consider subscribing if these kind of topics and things definitely interest you, if it's what you need help with. And like and comment down below. Let me know like what your favorite anxiety busters are, some things that have helped you, whether it's a thought or a technique or a supplement. I don't, I don't care what it is, but it's something that other people can go down below and read about as well. So share that with me below and I will see you on the next video.